most humbled I've ever felt in my life. I'm literally holding resumes, a stack of them, so that I can go in person to places and say, are you guys hiring? <laughs> it's honestly a little bit embarrassing because I'm literally applying for like minimum wage jobs and some of them are being like, we're not hiring. And it's like, what? This is not what I expected. I graduated college with two degrees in communications and acting. I speak three languages. Oh. This yeah, those two degrees are kind of useless. Communications, acting. A lot of women brag that they are more educated than men. But then you ask them, what's your degree in? They start mentioning things like communication, acting. What? Heck are you gonna do with that and also how much debt and student loans do you owe for those two worthless degrees degrees that can't even get you a job and now you are out there looking for minimum wage jobs why even go to school just to end up looking for a minimum wage job i don't know it doesn't make sense to me let's keep it going was a man and I'm not a man but if I was a man I wouldn't hire a woman I wouldn't do it and I said all the time and I say that and that is something that women need to consider when they're talking about this stuff when you are saying that a man complimenting you saying oh I really I, oh I really like your outfit today um is a form of sexism what is the if you're a man why hire a woman right so you no, fought no. all this time to be able to get into the workforce only to say these are going to be the rules you know if you say anything even if you compliment me if you if you look at me anything I'm going to have a reason to fight you and by the way you're going to want to settle and pay me because even just the stain of an accusation is enough to ruin men so what wow. is what if you're if you're a guy right in this society in this me too environment in this in this uh, litigation rich environment of misogyny and sexism and all of these claims what is the value add uh, what's the the risk you know the the best benefit and the risk i just i can't do the analysis and say i'd just be like no i'm sorry everyone. give me all that it can be very dangerous working with a woman to be honest one thing about me is that if i'm working with a woman i definitely would not want to be left alone in the room with her because i mean you never know right you never know the only way i'll be left alone in the room with a woman is if there are cameras in that room so that if she says some bs there's evidence right there that oh you're full of shit right so yeah 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 you gotta be careful you gotta be careful let's keep it going the me too movement took down hundreds of powerful men two years later some say it is costing women opportunities and causing segregation in some workplaces larry seaworth breaks it down the year spacey weinstein moomis and lauer went down and Hashtag Me Too rose in a tide that pushed 200 powerful men out jobs for sexually harassing women. UH business professor Dr. Leanne Atwater kept tabs and worried. Corporate America planned to cleanse cultures, listen to women violated, and take harassment complaints more serious. But if you're lacking in integrity and you're kind of a sexist, then your answer to this is, okay, we'll just keep them out and that'll solve the problem. We won't hire them. We won't include them, and then we don't have to worry about it. So she ordered anonymous online surveys. 300 men, 300 women asked how Me Too changed their workplaces. Results published in Harvard Business Review say nearly a third of those men avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings with women. More than 20% reluctant to hire any woman for jobs that require travel or close interaction. Another 19% say they avoid hiring attractive women. On the review blog, one manager added, unfortunately, in my estimation, getting too close to women at work puts your career and reputation at risk. So a paper came out recently that looked at the impact of the Me Too movement on academia, and it actually shows that 
post Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. The paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of sexual harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. The author points out that men feel like if they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. She also notes that institutions that have clear policies on sexual harassment help reduce this perceived risk. And this isn't just in academia. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the same concerns. Wow, 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in a common work activity with a woman. That's, that's crazy. 60%. Yeah, but you can't blame them, right? Because there's just so much on the line. It's too risky. Women make things up, man. They make things up. Especially sometimes when maybe she likes you and perhaps you don't like her the same way. Ooh, they can make things up, man. These women, oh my God. Yeah, they, they just love being victims. It's crazy, man. They just destroying the workplace. I'm so grateful to God, man, that I, I work from home. You know, I work full time from home, so I don't have to deal with none of this BS at work. It's just absolutely crazy. And a curious finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas women don't make up for it at all. But the author concludes her findings by saying that Me Too was important for raising awareness, but it's also increasingly important for institutions to have really clear sexual harassment guidelines. Fast and Furious star Vin Diesel is being sued for alleged sexual battery by a former assistant. Asa Jonathan filing the lawsuit in L.A. County Superior Court today. It alleges that Diesel forced himself on her in his hotel suite. It allegedly happened back in 2010 while she worked for him during the filming of Fast Five in Atlanta. Jonathan claims the actor groped her and pinned her against a wall before pleasuring himself, all while she allegedly refused. The suit claims hours after the incident, Jonathan was fired. We reached out to Diesel's reps, but they did not give us an official comment. And that's the problem with all these accusations, right? Even if he was innocent, the, the stigma, you know, the stigma is always going to chase him for the rest of his life. And that's the problem with this stuff, you know? I don't know. Will I trust him around my daughter because of that stigma? I, again, I don't know. That's the problem with this stuff, right? The guy may be innocent, but these women, they just, especially when you got some money, man, like, they can ruin your life. They can definitely ruin your life, that's for sure. Here's a quick one about a gal who she, as well as her female co-workers, are having a meltdown because a guy at work isn't paying attention to them. And as I say, women, uh, they need attention validation the same way plants need sunlight and water, and how if a guy rejects them, either rejects their advances, doesn't pay attention to them, they lose their freaking minds. Title, a colleague at work, a 27-year-old male of one year, refuses to socialize with me, a 24-year-old female, or any of the women in our office. Oh, the travesty. There are plenty of other horrible things going on in the world, but nothing is as horrible as a guy, God forbid, not paying attention to you and your friends. She says here, hi all, I'm posting this on alternative uh, alternative site because I know a few of my friends are following me on here and I don't want this spilling out until I have some clear thoughts on what I want to do. Oh, you're trying to say you don't want any drama because something tells me you like drama. So early last year, our firm hired Dan, a 27-year-old male. In the first few weeks, he was really quiet and didn't talk much and that's just how we thought he was. Every conversation with him was short and to the point and never deviated from work, aside from pleasantries, have a nice weekend, etc. About two months ago, he started becoming a bit more friendly with the guys in our office, and they would hang out every so often after work and have normal conversations. Isn't it interesting that she and her friends are really paying close attention to what this guy is doing? However, when any, whenever any of the girls in the office tried to do so, he would quickly ch uh, change the conversation back to just work or not reply. Even now, after a year of Dan working with us. That's a smart guy right there. 100% smart guy. He straight up refuses to socialize with the girls in the office and he's making them feel uncomfortable. What? This is absolutely crazy. Wow. So you talk to these three men, you get into trouble. And if you don't talk to them, you could get in trouble as well. For not talking to them 
I mean, like he said, they need attention the way a plant needs water, you know. I think that's that's why it's true. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely crazy. Oh, now he's the bad guy. He's making us feel uncomfortable. Maybe he's sticking to business. Maybe he's worked at a place where the girls act like it's high school and wants nothing to do with it. Or maybe he's become very RP'd, understands about MG Tau, things like that, knows the Mike Pence rule, and he's doing that for a good reason. But he's making you uncomfortable. He avoids any discussion of himself outside of work-related events and future plans and doesn't ask any of the girls either. Aware as he is, what can I only assume, pretty good friends with the guys in the office. Even on work meals out to celebrate events, he's only doing the bare minimum when it comes to conversation with the girls, where again with the guys, he talks to them like there is no problem whatsoever. I don't know if I'm overreacting. You sure about that? But one of the girls is considering going to HR about this because she is saying it's creating a hostile work environment. Wow, you, you can't win, you know. It's, it's impossible to win. And all of this is because I'm willing to bet that this guy is a good looking guy. You know, probably tall, handsome, six pack, all that stuff, you know. So, of course, the women are dying to talk to this gentleman, you know. But he's doing the right thing. Avoid them like the plague. Let them go to HR. Yeah, go to HR and say a guy is not talking to you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what? I'd rather them do that than go talk to them, be friends with them, and then the freaks being called a sexual predator. But definitely. I mean, good for this gentleman. Good for him. Dan treats us like he treats clients we work with. Cordial and strictly about business, and it's wearing thin now. Any advice is appreciated. Okay. She asked for advice, so I'll give some advice. You and your friends need to grow the F up. You're 24 years old, so I'm assuming all the female co-workers are probably in the 20s. We all know what generation they're in between the Z-tards and the Millennials. And they, she's certainly behaving like a bunch of Z-tards and, and Millennials. Your work is a place of business. To earn a paycheck, to pay for your living expenses, or to build a career. Not high school. But she's acting like it's high school. If this guy doesn't want to talk to you, that's his business. He probably has experience where BS goes on, gossiping and drama and turmoil, which you're creating drama, and wants nothing to do with it. And given how you're acting here and saying that it's a unpleasant work environment or some BS like that, and think about going to HR, gee, you wonder why he doesn't want to talk to you. Problem is this, you can handle the fact that a guy doesn't want to pay attention to you, that a guy isn't flirting with you, asking you out and all that, and it's driving you freaking crazy. A day in my life getting laid off at Google. So I woke up to this really ominous text from my boss and I honestly had no idea what it was going to be about. So I called her the minute I woke up and saw this and she told me to check the news and my email. So I rushed downstairs to find out that I had lost access to basically everything. I couldn't log into my email or even check my calendar. I called my boss back and we just sobbed over the phone because she was also finding out about my layoff for the first time today too. I started getting calls from a bunch of my coworkers and started finding out who else was let go on my team and some neighboring teams as well. But I think the worst part Part is that it seems like no one was consulted on this decision and everyone was just finding out about the layoffs at the same time. It just felt like a really bad game of Russian roulette and there was no consistency around who was let go. It was also not performance based so it just felt really random. I opened up LinkedIn which honestly was not great for my mental health. There were so many people who were in the same boat that were both equally as shocked and blindsided but it did help me feel a little less alone. Honestly I spent so much of the day crying. Uh, that, that can suck though i mean that, that's weird though. that's weird i mean to be fired like that no reason whatsoever i mean i've been there as well right like like what did i do <laughs> yeah they'll tell you some bs whatever man let's keep going and as of today then we're going to part ways i think i'm about to get fired i've been having some issues with this company for quite a while. I couldn't come into the office today because I had a really bad migraine and I told her, you know, I can log on later if I'm feeling up too late. I just am not feeling good. Now all of a sudden she scheduled a discussion in 10 minutes 
on Google Meet and I'm, I believe I am getting fired. I hate working at this company, so it's not like, like I, I knew I was gonna get fired eventually. They are not willing to work with my accommodation whatsoever. I have some mental issues that they are refusing to help with. Some of the things that they have said to me have I've just been full blown disgusted with. I'm almost considering seeking legal advice because I really don't know what to do. Like my heart's pounding. I'm so pissed. I am totally getting fired. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, that, that can suck for sure. But we don't really know if she's a good employee or not, you know. We don't know if she actually does any kind of work. Sometimes when a company sees that they are not going to make their yearly profits, one way for them to make money is by laying off a few employees so they don't have to pay out a bunch of high salaries. So it is what it is. Earlier this year, I had the displeasure of dealing with a female coworker harassing a male coworker. A male subordinate comes to me to report the female subordinate. She decided that she wanted his opinion on fellatio techniques. She asked him because he's openly gay. I went with him to HR to report. HR calls everyone involved to get their side. At this point, the female employee realizes the male employee snitched and begins badmouthing him. HR hands down punishment based on zero tolerance policy. Three days unpaid suspension for the male victim, but only one day unpaid suspension to the female employee because she's pregnant and we can't cause too many problems. Yeah, I mean, anybody who says we live in a man's world is, is crazy. We definitely live in a woman's world, you know. Men definitely get punished more for committing the same crime as women. And sometimes, even when they are innocent, men get punished, you know. And when it comes to, like, crimes and being sentenced to jail, men are sentenced, like, six times longer than women are for the same crime. You know, it's just, it's just crazy, man, like... Wow, I, I don't know. The male employee came back from suspension with legal representation. The awesome. female employee came back and all the male employees avoided her and any situation where they would need to be alone with a female employee. And blame them after that, you know. It's the right thing to do because some of these women are just crazy. Can you imagine if a man walked up to a woman and said to her, teach me a few techniques, like sexual techniques? Oh my goodness. Wow. Especially if this woman did not find you attractive. I mean, that would be the end of that man. That would be the end of that man. But women, they get a slap on the wrist, you know? So, wow, it's crazy. Many people, including myself, only became aware of the Me Too movement in 2017 when Rose McGowan, a white wealthy woman who was a famous actress, brought it up. But it was actually started all the way back in 2006 by Tarana Burke, an African-American social activist. Women of color have been speaking up about sexual abuse in low-income workspaces for ages, but they never garnered the same attention as a rich white actress. Well, isn't this awesome? Due to the hard work and efforts of feminism in the Me Too movement, has made men not only be extra careful working with women in the workplace, but it is making men not even want to work with women. There's been some backlash about Me Too and some anxiety, as you might imagine. Uh, me personally, I don't like to talk about racism and all that stuff. The fact that when black women were talking about it, it wasn't taken seriously, and all of a sudden a white actress talks about it and it's now taken seriously. Look, I don't know nothing about that stuff, so I'm just going to stay away from it. Many, many male managers and owners um, are feeling a little bit more tentative when working with and, and managing their female workers. Listen to this. A side result, an unintended consequence of the Me Too movement has popped up. Male executives and managers, some, are now saying they are afraid to work with and mentor female colleagues in the workplace. So we're trying to find out. Is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment? Listen, I can't give any more information. 
Uh, but I fear I may have girl boss a bit too close to the sun. A large percentage of male managers were concerned about working with women one-on-one -on -one in the workplace. They were concerned about mentoring women. They were saying they were afraid to have meetings with women, to travel with women, and so on. It indicates that there are anxieties and fears that we need to address. Why are women surprised about this, though? Like, it's what I don't get. Like, the women seem to be surprised that men are beginning to avoid them at the workspace well ladies if you were a man what would you do though knowing fully well that a woman can just make anything up just accuse you you know even when you did nothing and nobody would care you as the man you are gonna be punished even if you are innocent you're still gonna be punished what would you do if you're a man I don't think women have actually sat down to think about this, to think about what they will do if they were a man. Because they don't need to. They don't need to worry about none of that, you know? Because men are not out there accusing women of anything, you know? Women are the ones accusing men. Now, of course, there are men out there that are sexual predators. We all, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm not out here saying that every man is innocent. No, 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 no. That's not the point of this, you know? There are definitely men out there that need to be punished for all the bad things they do but if women are out there making things up they should definitely be punished as well you know that's my point tonight one retired ceo is speaking out about why he thinks this might end up having the wrong effect on women in the workforce steve trisha well this new wave of women standing up against sexual misconduct has led to all sorts of changes but tonight one ceo believes it may be preventing women from getting the jobs they want from the entertainment industry to the gaming world, women everywhere are standing up against sexual misconduct in the workplace. It's a new day. It is the era of the women now. The latest case has brought this movement right to the Las Vegas Strip. Casino mogul Steve Wynn stepping down as CEO yesterday after allegations he sexually assaulted employees. But is time really up? I have a big concern. <clears throat> and it's what's going to happen in hiring going forward. Mark Yosiloff is the director of UNLV's School of Gaming and Innovation and hired hundreds of men and women as former CEO of Shufflemaster. He says this movement will make it tougher for women to get hired, especially when they're up against a qualified man. They might elect to hire the man because they are concerned that down the road, whether they do anything wrong or not, there might be a she said, he said. Yoslov says current CEOs he knows have already opted not to sit in meetings alone with women in fear they would do something to spark a complaint. It's a craziness that no executive wants to have to face. Yeah, and the way some of these women also dress to work is absolutely crazy. You know, a lot of these women, they kind of sexualize themselves even at work they just it's just weird it's just weird anyways gentlemen i appreciate it ladies too thank you for watching thank you for supporting this channel i love you all and i will see you